denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of the Saints Block Party podcast coming at you. Uh, thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, Ryan, did you do anything? <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> that was, that was, I feel like that was very... Uh, appropriate Asian isk. Ovino. <laughs> oh no, 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 right. I don't. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy to I even always. go down. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I'm all. All I want to say is a, a rap beef in 2024 is just drastically, drastically different. So oh, at that. Man. I think Drake dropped another one, but I ain't got time for he, it. I'm done. He, I'm done. He put, I'm done. I, I checked out. I checked out um, after Kendrick dropped the the second one. The I, I was like, you know what? <laughs> Check it out of this brush. Too, too old. Too old, Ryan. <laughs> um, but thank y'all for joining us on a Sunday night. We appreciate it. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, football things are soon approaching uh we do want to apologize for the the the, the technical difficulties we had uh, hold on oh the 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 twitter thing is, is working now um, oh, twitter X, yeah it's, it's so apparently it doesn't start until we hit record so that makes sense so all that said sorry we had we apologize about the technical difficulties we had the last podcast episode uh, with the Spencer Rattler episode. We apologize Sorry. it didn't go as, as as smoothly as we wanted it to, but we'll we'll work on it. Um, but this episode, I want to give two shout outs. One big shout out to our dude G for the uh, ch- Chaboko. Chocobo. <laughs> ch- Chocobo. Choco- Chocobo Chasers podcast. Um, for suggesting this as a good podcast idea topic for us to do. Uh, also much love. It's, it's, I won't get too much into it, but I want to give a lot of love to Brian O'Rourke who has just been, uh, like a fundamental, uh, pillar of support. Our, he was our first, I believe our first sponsor that we had in terms of Vertimax, right. um, a couple of years back. So, uh, if you hear this or you see this, Brian, just want to let you know from the bottom of my heart, we really appreciate everything that you are supporting the podcast with and the, and the help. Uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, but football things are on the horizon, right? We have the schedule probably coming out in about two weeks. Um, wait, maybe even maybe even sooner than that, because I think it comes out maybe on the, either this upcoming week or next week, probably next week, though. And then we have rookie minicamp, I believe, from the 10th through the 12th for the Saints. Mm-hmm. Um, and after like rookie mini camp and the schedule, and then there's like the like the OTAs or whatever, it, 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 then it would just be dead. It would just be complete, Damn, huh? complete, complete nothing until training camp. But training camp is in Irvine, um, in Southern California, and so really excited to have boots on the ground type mm. of reporting, type of content. Listen, man, I remember the days of just being on Twitter, even before Twitter, Ooh. being on Saints Report, just trying to get, like, any snippets, just anything, <laughs> news, who pictures, who is anything. Who is, who is that? I want to be able, speaking of 20, 2024, to be able to bring, like, legit high-quality type of content to people who listen, follow us, whatever it is, and be no, like, no oh, fire, shit. no fire, Dennis Allen signs this time, bro. No fire, Dennis. Allen. No, I won't. I want for I won't for the for the the support the the listeners and the viewers of the podcast. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. 
I got I got to get the camera in there and get the not, get not the not the super big lens, but at least one of my good lenses in there so we can get some some good content. Um, want to give just love. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Um, if you are please. along for the ride, uh, let's see. Mitch said schedule third schedule party Thursday. I don't even know what that means, Mitch. Uh, who that first time on the live chat? Shout out to RG. Oh, Mitch is stateside. Got it. Um, we have 11 viewers going or 11 viewers right now in the YouTube who's watching. But this topic, before we even get to the cut trade candidates, let's talk about the whole Ryan Ramchek like contract restructure. Now it's mostly incentives. I don't even know if Ryan Ramchek is going to make the team. It's kind of kind of fitting that we're talking about this on this podcast topic. I, I don't know what it means. It just basically most of his contract is pretty much just tied to his playing time and incentives. I believe Captain Cat- Terrell reported it. Underhill reported it. Um, and, and how his contract kind of got moved around. I think he's like a little over 1 million in his base salary. I don't know if that means that like, maybe there's a chance he comes back. And if so, like, I don't know how that will look in terms of, I don't know, man. It's a lot of, it's a lot of unanswered questions that I have no from, clue about. From what it seems like to me, he ain't playing. Bro. It doesn't seem like it, it. seems like he ain't playing. They, they structure the contract. is kind of like a, Straight up, just in case, like what if you know, as a what if right. they covered the way his contract is anyway, he he wouldn't retire until like next season or something like that, or like a post mm. first. So it's one of them things. I think the story is over for Ramcheck, bro. It's crazy, man. Like, I think that's the end. There's reports out here that he already lost weight and stuff like that, and you know, slimming down. Like, football is over, man. Trying to trying to get like like us on the, the Ram on 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 the Adam Ryan diet right now. I see I see you Ram. I see you Ram. I see you, bro. It's, it's just something about Ram check, Michael Thomas. Obviously not in the same draft class, but I just think about just great Saints players. Just mm-hmm. just just out Saints players are just football players, right? Saints aside, like you put. Michael Thomas or Ryan Ratchet on any team in their in their prime, they're all pros. They're whatever, right? And to just maybe think that I just and Michael Thomas's career isn't over, but just thinking that like their career has kind of dwindled down just quietly. Like there's something just not just feels not right about it. And and I mean, that's Michael how the Thomas, game of football sorry, is. Bro. I know, I know, man. I it's crazy, I don't know. man. It's just, it's. I just wish that core, that that new core, uh, that came in under Sean Payton, like that final push. I, I really wish they was able to get a ring, man. Like I just me, wish me they too, got a bro. Ring. Me you too. Know, AK Ram, Lattimore, uh, Michael Thomas, you know, uh, uh, Marcus Marcus Williams, C.D. Deuce, Cam Jordan. That would have been dope, man. Late, late career, Drew Brees with the pew pew pew. pew. Had him. What? What happened? What have had him too, bro? Demario. Uh, G said Demario would have had him too, Demo bro. for sure. Oh, just it, I hate it, Ryan. Like it, it, it feels gross, and it just. It, but that's. I mean, here's the thing. That's how sports are. That's but, sports, bro. Serious, but, man. but, but, but. <laughs> There's all like you could say that that's how sports are, but with the the Saints and the core that we're talking about, right? It all goes back. It all goes back to the no call, and this is not a podcast episode to relive the no call. Please, but I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm just saying the biggest difference between other sports, other great sports team that just didn't win a championship for whatever reason is they don't have the biggest sport, like, officiating travesty ever. Like, of course ever. the Saints would have the, it's like, oh, okay, there's plenty of teams. There's the, you know, did De- did Dez catch it and all that stuff. There's all kind of little stuff like that that people argue Dez about. Dez didn't catch it, IMO, but anyway. Was, was, but I'm saying, it's barbershop yes. arguments still to this day. There's no argument with the no call. It's just one of the most blatant, just, uh like it, it was a blow to the chest, bro. Like I, I don't forget that. Shot, man. shot, shotgun to the chest, bro. Boom. Literal depression. Literal yes. depression. 
two weeks, bro. I'll never, I'll never forget it. And the the whole the argument that people would like love to say after is like, well, you guys had an opportunity to want it over. You fucking idiots. If that call is called properly, that clock gets run down and a winning, like a more than likely a game winning field goal is, is kicked with like little to no time on the clock. Not to rehash it, but I do, I do think Sean Payton, cause Sean Payton was out of his mind after that too. Like Sean Payton was gone, like mentally gone after the new call. And I do wish he kind of, Ran, you know, just kind of rained everybody and like, look, okay, was OT. Like, because it just seemed like after that, everybody was just, the, the the dome was in shock. The team was in shock. Sean Payton was pissed, just still cursing out the ref the whole time. It just was, it was a mess. It, it was a mess. It, the, her, the, the crazy thing is we talk, we're talking about Ryan Ramchek and like if he blocks Dante Fowler a little yeah. longer. Yeah, like, bro. Like that, that pass was wide. Like, as, as, I, was as just, how, I was just thinking about the playoff games, just of that core that I mentioned. Just that you had the no call. You had that's the, what. Well, the, Dante in the, the chat just said, "How cruel is it that the dynasty started with the Minnesota Miracle and ended with the no call?" You had the you had the Minnesota Miracle, the no call. Then you had the Vikings upset Kirk Cousins' only playoff win, only playoff win, followed by the Tom Brady. You know. The very forgettable. Uh, J- Jared, Jared, Jared Cook. Uh, Cook fumble. Yeah, very forgettable. Uh, COVID game, whatever. Uh, someone said, happy Kenny Vaccaro day. Wait, three, three, two? Oh, I'm confused on why is it Kenny Vaccaro day. Five, huh? Cinco de Mayo? I'm confused. because it's, I, I don't know. Cam, don't Cam know. W, you might have to elaborate on that one. Um, <laughs> Today I haven't heard in years. <laughs> Tony said, "wasn't wasn't just a bang bang close play kind of thing that was easy to miss. It was a travesty officiating. Just, just that, that's what I, that's what I was just saying. Like the, the point I was making is that there are great sports teams in all walks of sports: football, basketball. Just you could just baseball that would just for whatever reason just didn't win the championship and what have you. But none of them can really like like they got beat. Like they got beat right." Um, although I don't know if you, you probably haven't watched it, but I did not know this until I watched the, basically like the redeem team, uh, documentary on Netflix. that was really good about the, uh, the U- team USA that like got back on track and won a gold medal for the U S in basketball. Um, that had to be what, 2016, seven? I don't remember what year it was, but, um, no, it wasn't 16. No, no, no. That was 2008. Yeah. Once it was 2008. That. Doug Collins was on like a prior team USA and they had like won their it was like it was for the goal they had beaten the team they were supposed to beat right I don't remember what team it was and time goes off and then the officials like reviewed it and found that there was like another like two three seconds on the clock there wasn't by the way the USA got jobbed and then they re like they played out the line like the final seconds and the team who was like down like scored and also was like an offensive foul and like Team USA like loses and like some like some of the most heartbreaking travesty ever like that's the only thing I've seen that's like relatable to the no call because wow. like that was like the like the 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 clock said zero <laughs> bro yeah clock said zero um but I felt like that was more kind of like I don't know like international officiating like it was like if you ever if you see it you're like oh this is something's up anyway yeah um yeah uh yeah mitch so I was, yeah i was talking about 2008 where the dream team won but the the, the netflix special like you talk you see doug collins um who was on the team way back when that got a job anyway yeah sorry it was russia thank you shane <laughs> yes it was against russia so this all checks out um Anything anything else before we dive in? I, I will say this. I will say this. We've got 19 concurrent viewers on right now. I'm excited. And also the planner in me can't wait to see the the schedule release, bro. I need oh, I yeah. need I need to see the schedule release. Because oh, yeah. one, we got we gotta do our schedule release episode, but then also it's planning time. We gotta we gotta figure oh, out which 
which game's going to be the third annual Saints Block, Par- Saints Block Party podcast meetup game, see when the Chargers Saints game is for the West Coast meetup. And then I don't, I don't know. Oh, thank you, LZ. He said that was 1972. <laughs> Whew. Against 1972 against Russia. That, like, Man. that's deep in the Cold War, bro. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off, but I don't, and I don't know if Ryan still has that connection in New York potentially for lodging, but the UK guys, our dude, Mike, MK, MK Papa, shout out to the St. City and me podcast. Make sure you check them out. Said that the UK guys want to come over for both the SBP meetup game, whichever game that's going to be, and potentially also the Saints-Giants game. Mm. You've never been to New York. No. If we could, su- I don't I don't know if it's to the point where we just got to like maybe like just pull together and just all get like a huge, nice Airbnb that makes it affordable for everyone. I don't know, Ryan. I don't know. I don't know. But that would be such an experience to be go to new york oh man. watch like oof, man saints block patreon.com slash saints block. <laughs> please please thought that was a dollar a month please. the only way that shit's gonna happen bro. only way only way oh um, <laughs> Yeah, we we completely went past um uh May the fourth, bro. But I don't even like Kylo Ren, bro. But more, bro, just please, <laughs> Brian, if you're listening, help us. Just I'm just kidding. Please, uh, D said we're going to place bets on what game we think the meetup will be. Man, I don't, I don't know. I I I. I, I Hold on, hold on. Like, Late October, on. November, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I just think he's just, just. Cause I'm, I'm pulling up the, the home opponents who they're, who they're gonna play at home. All right. So, of course, you got Atlanta, Carolina, Tampa Bay. Then you have Cleveland, Denver, Vegas Raiders, Rams, ugh, Philadelphia, Washington Commanders. I'm gonna guess. I would put money money on either it being the Cleveland game, the Raiders game, or the Commanders game. That's my guess. Oh, the, oh, oh no, that that Commanders game is going to be pricey because Jalen, no, that game's also not going to work. <laughs> See, this is the thing, the planner, the things I got to think about. Like, these are the things, like, it has to be affordable for everyone. And if it's the Commanders game, everyone's going to watch Jalen. And so I'm... Yeah. I'm I'm gonna say either the Raiders game or the Browns game. That's my guess in terms of watch Browns game. Watching the quarterback that could have been. <laughs> Why is my uncle? Ta- okay, the Dallas game is away, Ed. Like that's that's a, that's in Dallas. <laughs> and Dallas tickets are also super freaking pricey, like Cowboys tickets. So, um, Justin said thoughts on a Sean uh, uh, Marshawn for Trey Hendrickson trade. I no, I just don't want no. I just don't no. Like I, I love Trey Hendrickson. I I love him as a player. Um, but then that gets messy because one, when you're trading Marshawn, you're taking on thirty million dollars in dead cap space, and then you're gonna trade for Trey Hendrickson, who wants a contract extension. So then you gotta repay him. It just it feels like that's it's, hustling backwards. Hustling backwards. Getting rid of Melshawn and Sox Hustler back was period. But then trading him to bring on some other older player with more money is just like what what are we what are we doing here? What are we doing? What when, are we when doing? they could when they when they kind of treat to keep him. Uh Saints being right. bloody means it would be affordable for everyone if you wait till the last second. Yeah, G, but like when you're planning for like thirty yeah. plus people, you, you, yeah, you can't right, wait you know. to, can't wait till the last second, man. Like the like it's it's in theory, yes, but like when you're trying to have so many people like sit together, it just it's difficult. It just becomes some tickets. Man, them tickets last year, you couldn't get them things away. Oh, I couldn't, give them, couldn't give them away, bro. Couldn't give them away. Um, Rod, our dude Rod said the Broncos game is out. 
Yes, absolutely up. Um, Justin says, what is fair compensation for a Marshawn trade? I mean, if if you're the Saints, I think a fair fair comp fair compensation, if we're being honest, in my opinion, without being biased, would be a low first round pick or early second round or early round two pick. Yeah, agreed. That that is fair compensation. <laughs> and if and there's not if there there's not a team that's willing to give you that, and like listen. The Eagles, Eagles and Lions both got their guys in that same range. And who knows? Maybe Teron, uh, Terry and Arnold is going to be good. Maybe uh, Quinion Mitchell is going to be good, but maybe they're not, right? And then maybe they just would have had, rather have had Marshawn for for three years at you know at his peak and likely potentially healthy. And you know maybe they would, but time will tell. Time will tell. Um, anything else? It's, so schedule. But yeah, like like Ryan said, if we're gonna do a a, a New York SBP meetup, Patreon dot mm-hmm. Patreon slash Saints Block Party Podcast. Mm-hmm. You got the YouTube membership going five ninety nine a month. It. I'm just, just saying, just saying. All it. Who? It would be fun though. It man, that would it be would. just a, it's just such a amazing experience and kind of going back to. When our dude uh, Charles came from Scotland, first time in America, you know, oh, first man. time in New Orleans, all that. Not the same because it's still in the U.S., but, you know, for people like yourself or whatever who hasn't been to New York, it's such a, like, just different, man. It's just different, man. Like, I can imagine. To, to just have people, you know, close to me get to experience that and just be like, damn, like, this is cool as hell. Um, hell yeah. It it would be it would be a very very enjoyable um experience. Um, LZ says the Colts could be a sleeper team for Marshawn. I don't think I don't think they drafted a cornerback. They I mean they could be potentially. Um, I think I think what's going to come down to Marshawn is two things. One, the Saints. I'll give them credit. They have been patient ish in terms of letting this play out. You know, I'm, and I know that Mickey Loomis got like on a was it I don't even, it was Adam, Adam Sheen ugh, blocked. And just basically talked about like, you know, they weren't taking calls. It, I don't know. It was just he, Mickey, he Mickey talk. He basically gave the you know factual but not truthful answer. You know but there you go. We're not shopping Marshall Lesnar. Which is probably factually true. They're not calling every th- uh, thirty-one teams saying, "Hey, want to take Latimer? Want to take Latimer?" No, oh, probably not. Right. But they've made the adjustment to the contract, and the word is out there that he is available for the right price. Right. And they're um, hoping somebody takes. Him. <laughs> you know? Like I was, I was told that they. It's okay, and I, I think I've, I think I've said this on the podcast. I know I've maybe said it in our Discord. So Howie Roseman, before round one started called the Saints. I'm just going to stick to Saints news. Called the Saints asking about Marshawn. Don't know what the offer was. Don't know what it, or anything like that. But obviously a trade didn't happen. What have you. The Saints, since this whole Marshawn thing's been brewing, have been pretty keen on getting at least a first. Which, I, again, again, to their credit, is is like a positive. Because we've seen them get... At, and I'm not I'm not advocating for trading for Marshawn, but I'm saying if you're if they're gonna trade him, like like the fact that they're essentially were holding out for a first is impressive. The thing that's gonna kind of test time is kind of what happens when training camp rolls around. Yes. On and it's twofold. If there's teams out there who gets a like an injury to cornerback and they maybe feel like Marshawn could help them. That's a route. That's a, a route where maybe that that first or that high second round pick becomes something that they're willing to give up. Also, I think something that's uh, that's kind of like an underlying subplot too. And I can't stand him because he's a DB perpetrator. But like Xavier Howard is also a free agent. So you, if if you're if you're a team, you're like, well, do I trade a draft asset asset or maybe just pay and sign Xavier Howard? Mm-hmm. It's kind of. It's kind of the, the easy route to go. Also, I think the Saints are going to have themselves a question in terms of 
okay, if he if his training camp, if he's still not shown up, maybe they're, you know, where they're wanting to get a, a first or maybe a high second round pick, maybe that lowers around just because he's not that's, there. That's the key. That's the thing right there. If if he forces the issue and the uh, you know the divorce papers are filed, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Then it's just you got to get what you can get. Hope it don't come to that. I hope it don't come to that. I don't think. I mean, he's not. He's not at voluntary OTAs right now. Right. Um, not a big deal. You know, he rarely comes to those from what I understand. Um, but, you know, will he miss, you know, mini camp and all that? Probably. And, okay. But once you start getting a training camp, and then they get, mm-hmm. you know, they get fined for that. Um, so that that's when the shit gets interesting. Mm-hmm. So we we're not gonna know nothing, bro. This is just gonna be something that, like a black cloud that's just hanging over the off season until like until like, what well, early part of September, I believe, is where the contract shifts and that option gets taken and all that stuff. Right. Once that happens, right. he's on the t- he's on the team for the year. Once that happens, so this is gonna be a cloud hanging over until then. It is. It is. Um, and I just hope, like, if you could just give me like one. Give me one season of a healthy Marshawn, a Debo, Kool Aid, Alante, Howden, Honey Badger, Sub Zero. Give me one season of that. Just one. I, I just I want to see it. I just want to see it. Um, <laughs> our dude Ross said, uh, "I'm not actively shopping." Sounds like a husband caught in a lie by his wife. <laughs> Hey, hey, why is he I gotta be a husband? Why I gotta be a husband? Why is he lying to you? Just saying. Uh, hey, people, opportunity cheaters in this bitch, right? For real. For real. Um, also, thoughts of adding a veteran safety like Justin Simmons. I'd be for it. I don't think ju- one Justin Simmons is like he wants to sign with the contender, bro. Like, I don't know. I, Justin Simmons would have no onus or reason to sign with the Saints in his and stage then, of his career. And, and then it just seems like we talked about it with Cody Alexander when we had him on. Go back and listen to it if you haven't. It. It's just like what the NFL is doing now with safeties and stuff like that. It's just it's weird, man. It's like they just throwing guys. Just they put us back there, bro. They put they, even at him. Come on, man. They put anybody. Did you back imagine there. right? <laughs> hey, bro. I cover the post. <laughs> if <laughs> bruh, I think we could have get like every Patreon we have for one month to just give us a hundred dollars just to watch you cover an NFL post route, bro. Oh shit, boy. It's free. <laughs> Against someone like fucking <laughs> like Jalen Jalen Waddle, bro. <laughs> Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me, bro. Bro, if you, now I'll say this, bro. You you get that that PBU. <laughs> oh, good to be shit. What are you doing? Oh, 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 bro, you could give up a, a sixty yard touchdown next play, bro. I wouldn't care, bro. I would be out there like Stephon Anthony. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Can we bring Almost back Pro versus, Pro versus Joe's, bro? Can we bring back Pro versus Joe's? Bring it back. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Uh, oh, Mark, sorry. Our dude, Mark, just got uh, in the live stream. You missed us talking about Mark. Ryan being uh, a free safety covering Jalen Waddle on a post route. That's what you missed. Do it, man. <laughs> the Saints PBU podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, nah, man, just, just I would just have to be a blocking tight end, bro. Like I got the bubble butt, but I can't catch well, so just put me in 12, 12 personnel, bro. <laughs> just have me <laughs> call me Josh Hill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We so anyway, this is actually <laughs> this is actually. <laughs> 
cuts and trade candidates. That's like the whole Ooh. purpose of us doing this podcast. Uh, again, shout out to our dude G for uh, kind of bringing this as an interesting topic for us to talk about. Hope everyone can see it. I will make it bigger. Uh, no ditty. Um, it's still pretty. Mm, 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 mm. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? <laughs> Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Okay, there you go. Mm -mm -mm. Zoom out a little bit. All right. Fucking ads, bro. Just ads. All right. That is someone. Hold on. Let me see what Mitch said. Because Mitch had said something. Um, Mitch said he's very excited about Fu Fuaga. More and more watching this tape. Yeah, man. He's I he's think the dude, thing about he, he's a dude. And like you it's this sounds weird to say, but like as a right tackle, his ceiling, like oh, I don't want to be be used too much hyperbole. He could be like a top five right tackle in the league, bro. Like that's how talented he is. Yeah, like no legitimately, question. legitimately. No okay, question. so always big shout out to our lads who again been using it for literally since I ever. Six sixteen when I was living in Texas, bro, I was people was using our lab. So it has been a stable staple, not a staple, a staple of looking up depth charts for NFL's teams and things like that. So I don't want to go through like players like, oh, you know, they might cut uh Equinomius St. Brown, who's wearing number thirteen. There's still no thank you, Michael Thomas uh social media post I should point out. Um shameful. But just legit like Oh, this might this player could get cut. Oh, this player could get traded. Just to just you know, obviously we don't we know a lot of play who players who are on the team right now aren't going to make the team and make the final fifty three, right? I don't want to talk about Kellen Kellen Munn. I don't want to talk about Nathan Peterman. Don't want to talk about those players. I'm talking about like the the spicy ones in terms of a cut or a player that may be traded that catches your eye. Now, I'll, I'll let you, I don't know if you need to look it over, or did you just have one just from the from the top? Well, I mean, the, the most obvious one outside of Lattimore is uh, Taysom Hill, obviously. Um, you know, I mean, they didn't touch his contract this year. Um, bringing in a new offensive staff that has no experience with them. I mean, his role was already kind of, I'm going to say up in the air, but he was just kind of like Mr. Do Everything. Uh, and he did everything, you know, to well, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, put the team on his back a couple times, but I just think it's up in the air, bro. He's 30 something years, what, 33 years old, you know? Damn, I mean, is he 33? You know, That's crazy. Yeah. And and honestly, we don't, all, there's only one other team that would want him, you know, and everybody knows that. It's the Broncos, you know, and would they give up something for him? You know, and Bronco, Broncos, bro, you look at Broncos' weapons, ugh. Like, ugh. <laughs> like the, it's like Sean's last couple of seasons with us, bro. <laughs> exactly. It's like, damn, Sean, come on, bro. <laughs> ain't let, man, ain't learned nothing. Um, he got a rookie quarterback, you know, like, I could see, I could see him saying, man, make it throw, let me throw you this little fifth, let me throw you this little sixth. Or man, throw him a player, <laughs> throw a player, bro, or something like if that. You, 
if you throwing me a fifth or sixth for Taysom Hill, bro, I'm just at that point, I'm just gonna hang up the phone. Like I, I would just, at that point, I would just keep him for a season and then cut him at the end of the season. Um, Please will. So I, I, I've said this about Taysom. I've been consistent in in saying it. So last season, so last off season, when they you know they brought in Foster Moreau, they signed Jamal Williams. I kept I kept asking it. And then it got kind of confirmed out of the fact. I just kept asking, like, man, like, they really are trying to address every role that Taysom exactly. played. And was told last off last off season after the offseason that they wanted to phase him out. They wanted to either cut or more than likely trade him last offseason. They didn't end up doing it. And then they brought in players to take his role, whether it's Kendra Miller, Foster Moreau, the, the list goes on and on. And at the end of the day, just who Taysom is and how the offense was, Taysom was kind of that break glass and emergency player. And they were like, oh, well, no shit. We need Taysom on the team, right? This offseason, it's not over, but leading up to the draft, I, there was a lot of Taysom to Denver chatter, right? A lot of Taysom to Denver chatter. Um, and, and just now I'm not saying it like even quarterback, just chatter. And I think there's still a want for the team to move on from Taysom because what I was told is that the team does not feel like he is worth, I believe, his $10 million mm-hmm. price tag. Now, what's funny is that the, they could say that he's not worth his $10 million price tag, but if you put a, the price tag together of, Foster Monroe, Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller, whoever, whoever else, all together, Taysom outperformed all of them. <laughs> all of them. So I, I just, it just from a logic perspective, it doesn't, it doesn't make. I don't know, man. It doesn't make sense. It, I don't know. It, I don't know. I really don't know, man. Like. It's 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 really going to be up to Hank Kubiak to find a role for him, you know. Like that's going to it's going to be interesting, man. Also, it's kind of up to Taysom. Like, does does Taysom want to continue being that kind of break glass when needed type of guy? I don't know. I, every, it's just kind I of know up the, in the the excitement for when Clint was hired, everyone was kind of like saying, like, man, that Taysom could be that like use check role and it, it it just it visually it makes so much sense it does we just we just don't know i'll say this it seems like the team and organization in front office listens to clint right and whether that was you know spencer rattler was just the best player on their board in, in round five just they felt like it was too good but clint also spent a lot of time with spencer rattler in the pre-draft process and obviously what he said to some degree had to carry some weight. So mm-hmm. if he feels like there's a there's a use that he could utilize Taysom in his offense, I think there's a chance that Taysom makes makes a team. But what wouldn't make sense to me, to me as a fan, the, the tight end room is kind of it's very meh. We don't know what Kendra Miller is going to give you for a season. Right. If you cut Taysom or trade Taysom, I, it's the same thing I kind of was asking the season, like the last off season, like who was replacing that production? Right. Like if you, if you cannot name a player or a players to me that can tell that you can tell me who replaces his production, then if you want to get rid of him, just get rid of him at the end of this upcoming season. Like it makes no sense to do it this season, unless you're getting, if like Sean's like calling you and trying to give a fourth, then all right, I understand it. For like a fifth, a sixth, and like you're not replacing that production, man. No, <laughs> we gonna see, bro. Um, let's see what the chat is saying. Uh, we may just outright cut him. Sean may not have to trade for him. I don't know if they would outright cut him. I just I don't know. I know that I know the team is just very kind of eh when it comes to Taysom. Uh, and. Our dude Tony said they had to bring in so many players to try and replace him. Said a lot about how valuable Taysom is. Yes, yeah. yes. Why do they want Taysom off the roster? Would be exciting to see Clint with Taysom. It all goes back to what he's getting paid, like that contract extension that he got, like right before, like a like a season or so before Sean left. So Taysom, I believe he gets like ten million a year. Which, if 
as a fan, if we see what Taysom do, like that 10 million seems like it's like very justified. Yeah. Whoever's working the Saints books, this is so not Kai, but like whoever's like managing the Saints money do not does not feel like he's worth that 10 million. Um anyway. So Taysom, obvious, obvious, uh, an obvious candidate. Uh, our dude G brought this up in our Discord, and he texted me about it, and it made so much sense. He mm. said, what about Pete Warner to the Cowboys for a third rounder? You have a team in the Cowboys who need, just have no linebackers at all. They have some problems defensively. Um, he's fallen out of favor, I think a bit. I mean, I think, you know, the Saints moves have shown you that he's kind of fallen out of favor maybe a bit with them signing Willie Gay in free agency. They drafted, they drafted Ford um, from Texas. Yep. And when Dree told me that, bro, I was like, run me that third, bro. Run it to me. Like, run oh, it third. to me. The third, hell yeah, man. He's in a contract year. Um, I Run me a third, quick. I don't think it would be a third, though. I don't Probably think. Probably like a fourth. Yeah, fourth. Um, and I think you got to see how it plays out because, look, he's in a – they brought in competition for him. They want to see if he steps up or not. And it's going to be interesting between him and Willie Gay. Um, all, sight, all sights on him, man. I could see it being one of those late August, early September trades if it were to happen, you know, mm. like right before cuts happen and all that stuff. Oh, like the CD Deuce yeah. trade. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I listen. I'm for it. Like again, I think so. The the, the Warner thing is a little even different for me because like with, with Taysom, I'm saying who's replacing his production. Um, let me stop sharing my screen a bit until we can maybe get more on the defense. Uh, with Taysom, I'm saying who's replacing his production. With Warner, it's like what production am I replacing? Right, it's like the inverse. Yeah, at least uh, at least the last season and a half for Pete Warner's career. And then, and like I said, it's competition. Like, what if Willie Gay comes in and is just balling? All right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, what if you just, remember how? Uh, I mean, like Demario. Demario started his career kind of you know up and down. You know, went to went to the Browns, went back to the Jets, went back to the Jets. Had like a real good season with the Jets, then came to us, and then just. All pros, you know what I'm saying? Every year. Crazy, I'm not saying Willie, I'm not saying Willie Gay do that, but like what if he just comes right. and like fits in the system? Didn't say got Dennis Allen got him schemed up right, playing along alongside DeMario. And what if he just outshined him, Pete? You know what I'm saying? That just makes it an easy decision, then. And then I don't know who said this. I don't know if it was I don't know, the Saints one of the use more three linebackers on the field. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> there was someone for, like it was someone I think like some like someone like on the Saints said it like a coach said it. Stop. Okay, stop. I don't know who who the fuck you think I am to watch football this long in 2024. Please. You telling me you want three linebackers on the field? Okay, please. all right. If it's not base, if it's not like a run heavy set, please stop lying to me. <laughs> you be playing with one linebacker, bro. <laughs> please stop lying to me. Um. He said, unless we're getting to, yeah, uh, Demon Tom Slime says, unless we're getting 2021, Pete, ship him. Uh, G said, Peyton Turner going to Baltimore and then finally being healthy. <laughs> don't, don't, don't think it was even matter, bro. <laughs> man, man would just be sh- be smiling in, in the Chocolate City, bro. <laughs> bro, can you imagine if, like, Pey- Peyton Turner has, like, Starts off like a little hot season, you know, as you know, three sacks in the first month or whatever. And they get calls like they got for uh, Davenport before no, the trade don't do deadline. This. Don't do this, bro. Bro, <laughs> can you imagine if they, if they denied a trade offer for Peyton Turner? You know what's funny? I don't think they would for Peyton Turner. Because I think. No, I mean, listen, man, this goes back to like the rookie season, right? There are people think players and or coaches on the team who felt like the injuries he had in his rookie season. And I'm not saying that they were or not. So please don't take this as that's what I'm saying. But there were players and coaches that felt 
like he could have played his rookie season after mm-hmm. after the coming of injuries he got, and he was just kind of like, <sighs> hey. <laughs> Okay, this is okay. This is not funny, but like the the whole Baltimore thing, bro. Like now, like all I picture is like like him on like the 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 boat that hit like the the bridge, bro. But like you know, you know the Peyton Turner picture where he's like smiling on the boat, bro. Just just, just going just going right towards the bridge. Bro. <laughs> That's all I see, bro. Um. I will say this, since we're on both Peyton Turner and Isaiah Foskey, what if, oh yeah, the Saints didn't pick up Peyton Turner's fifth year option. Like, that's not breaking news. What if they just don't, like, you just don't see any, what if they don't see anything from any, either of them, training camp, preseason, like, could you see them cutting either one of them? Or both of them, if it like Fosky, no, um, I just don't see it. Even if you had like a horrible training camp, I still don't see it. Like it's just they're gonna give it time. Peyton Turner, if he comes in and he's just injured and bad, not doing nothing, I could see them cutting him, bro. I could see it because you know, at this point, you're just taking up space and don't let like one of the young bucks. I don't know who else on the depth chart, but. You, you remember uh, all that noise uh, Legolas was making in preseason Legolas, last year? Yeah. Right? Bring Legolas back, man. Shit. Shit. Take space. Come on, now. Yeah, I could see, um, see Pay Turner getting cut. I could. I could, too. Um, who, who mentioned Jawan Johnson as a trade candidate? I thought that was interesting. It was, it was our dude in the, in the chat saying, we, we like, if we're, you know, just a, just a general question, if we would trade Jawan for a fifth or a sixth. Hmm. I think G brought the point that I think you, at that point, like, I think because of the contract extension, like it, it, it just seems like it's hustling. Like one of those, another situation where like you're, you're hustling back, you're backwards. And then I said this, and I know Max can't, can't stand Jawan Johnson and maybe he was right all along, but it creates even like the tight end room is not great as it is. That like makes it even worse. Unless um, yeah. like unless you have a plan. Uh, now it's different if the undrafted free agent just comes in and just starts balling. Uh, yeah, Hawker. Hawker. Yeah. Now, if Hawker comes in and he's just looking like he's him, that's a completely different scenario. Um, but um, like unless that happens, I. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, we'll see, man. It's it's hard to make major. Like, I know Jawan Johnson had his own struggles last year. Um, but it, it's hard to make big judgments about the passing game from last season because it was a mess, bro. Right. Right. Whole offense was a mess, man. Whole offense. And he turned it on at the end of the season just like Derek Carr did, just like most of the offense did. So I right. don't know. I don't know. Let's see what this thing holds with Clint Kubiak and what he do. You know, Jawan um, might cook this year, bro. He could. He could. The the cornerback, aside from Alante, discussion is very fascinating. Fair, especially Fair. with the selection of Kool Aid McKintry. You have Alante, who, like, I don't really even know how much you can take from Alante last season, being that he played slot when he maybe got, like, five snaps in the slot in training camp and had never played slot before, right? Literally the definition of throwing someone in the fire. Right? And something and something uh, uh, they brought out upon uh, fo- New Orleans football, I mean, was, they were saying that Latte, he really didn't buy into playing the slot till like, halfway through the season. Because it's just like, he, he's an outside corner. That's in his mind, like, I'm an outside corner. You right. know what I'm saying? So he didn't really buy into, okay, I'm going to be a nickel quarterback. I'm going to be the best nickel cornerback I could be. 
didn't really buy into that. You know, he's still battling those little type of immaturities. Um, it's, I don't know how he feels this year. Is he is he buying in? I don't even know where he's going to play. Are they going to put him in nickel this year? I assume so. Um, are they going to have him compete with Kool Aid? I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. They're going to have him compete with Kool Aid. Whatever going to happen with Lattimore is going to happen, and that's it. It's just it's one of those things. And when I when I got told this a couple of weeks ago, it just blew my mind that outside outside of slot, if if essentially that if Alante is not playing the slot, he's going to be a special teamer. That that that's is crazy. this. That is potentially how the see the team views him. It, it it doesn't make sense in my head. I know what I saw. Well, who do you, who do you replace? Like, do you take a Debo out? Like, I don't know. What do you do? That that's that's what I'm saying in turn, this whole trade thing. If this is me, me potentially at Saints GM or us, I think the player that. If we're talking players to trade, the one of the smartest players to trade that you could trade right now to me is Paulson Adiba. Yes. Because he has the highest trade value of probably anyone on the team. He came off a stellar year, and it's, it's kind of inflated because of like the right receivers and the quarterbacks he went against, but it, it looks good, right? So you could sell good, that, though. right? Yep. And if you could... Uh, I, you don't. You're not getting anything any more than a second. But if you get a sec, a second round pick from a team who needs a cornerback, he's in the last year. Of his, he's in the last year of his contract. I I like a Debo. He's a good player, but is a Debo worth essentially what a Jalen Johnson ish in that range is getting? That's 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 really where the question lies. Is is Paulson Debo worth that range? It, or even a better question is: Is Paulson Adebo a true number one cor- cornerback? Because um, you got to pay him. Got to pay him. That's what I'm saying. Got to pay him. If you believe he's number one, that means you're ready to pay him seventeen pay or twenty him. million. That that right. I'm that just saying. Rams game. That flipping, right. I don't flipping that, the third. I don't, Flipping a third round pick, he was a third round pick, and turning him to a second round pick before paying him—that's smart business to me, bro. Smart business. If you and if you load it at the position anyway, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like if that's something you can make happen, that's smart business to me. If you if you don't want to pay that money, you know what I'm saying? Uh, G, G said the other side of this: What happens if Adebo is traded and Marshawn continues to get injured or play starts to fall off because of his age? It's a risk. It's so a complete it's, risk. Like that then, is like But they're still so deep. And you right. got Kool-Aid on the outside and a lot to play on the outside, the position he loves to play, you know? And then you gotta so, hold that nickel again, but you know. Right. Demon Tom Slom says, Can a Debo <laughs> guard Mike Evans, uh Wilson, Diggs, Child Abuser, Justin Jefferson, Chase, Puka, Lamb? I don't think he can. We saw we saw it last year many times where we like why is why is Paul Nadebo covering this scrub? Put him on whoever. Put him on Puka. Put him. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Maybe he can. I don't know. Like Paul Paul is a good good cornerback. And he had a good oh yeah year. yeah yeah oh, yeah good yeah work a year struggle with injury second year. Mark said eight years ago we be begging for Nadebo on the team. Bro. Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy, bro? Like, yeah, I, I just things have changed. Thank you for a Debo. Hey. Please, the Debo. Please. <laughs> I don't want to like, get the bye. vaccine either. <laughs> <sighs> it's, a, it's a good problem to have. And that's why, like, if this is just, we're, we're just talking, right? Because then, in theory, if you trade a Debo, you, you save money because you're not extending him. And then you could potentially move. Alante back to outside and Kool Aid in the slot. I just don't. It does not feel like the team either has a want or a preference to play Alante outside anymore. And I could not tell you why. Couldn't tell you why. So weird. Um. Dante said we got a room 
full of cornerback twos and threes outside of Marshawn. Yeah. Probably true. Uh, probably true. <laughs> he said, y'all remember us start our Demon Time Slime said, y'all remember us starting B.W. Webb, Sterling Moore, and Devonta yeah. Harris? Yes. Yes, Ghost Boy. Sterling Moore, baby. Still the most. Uh, down OBJ. We, <laughs> man, we got yeah. beat. This man was put the put the caption on Instagram. No, I ain't even mad at it now, bro. I the mean, fan back. As a fan back then, I was annoyed. Now, man, you know how hard it is to get an interception in the NFL? Go ahead, post, 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 your, post your shit, Sterling. I don't care. I ain't a good game. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> um, how many sacks will Brian Brissy have this year, in your opinion? Hmm. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it like this. Five and a half, over or under? Over. Ooh, over five and a you, half. You you getting that five? You you getting over five and a half sacks from your interior defensive tackle? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yes, sir. I think he going. I say he had probably like six and a half, something like that. Seven. Man, what? Man that would be that would be great. That would, would be great. Be. Uh, what players would you potentially like to see us look at trading for? Anyone at tight end or at safety? Oh man! I don't know. I don't know if I want to give up any picks right now. I can't. I can't. Like, there's no one who's like just standing out to me. Oh, I have one. I have one. You ready for this? I got one too. Go ahead. Oh. Only because I know that they wanted to move on from him after Dalton Kincaid was drafted. Rummy Dawson Knox or Dawson Knox. Oh, like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I would. I would be willing. Now he's a little older. I would. I guess it depends on how you feel, how close you are as a team. I give up a, a, at least a fourth for Dawson Knox, at least. And Ooh, and I about, know that. Go ahead. How about uh? Give up Paulson or Debo. Okay, I'm listening. For Knox and like a fifth. I'll do that. I'll do that. The only thing that th- this is our podcast. Maybe, the only maybe thing a that, little high. Maybe a third. I don't know. I, no, because if you if you put in the, a Debo in, wait. We're getting Knox and a third? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Ru- <laughs> Running to it, bro. <laughs> Running to it. I'll, I'll the thing say, that- then, uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go with us. No, go ahead with I was just going to say, so if that happens, I'm assuming, here's the crazy thing. Even if they made that trade, I think they would then look at it as the outside corner still being Marshawn and being Kool-Aid. I don't. I think they are yeah. that against playing Alante on the outside. That that's how they would try to do it. It would make sense, bro. It would make sense. And I was saying, how about Taysom, straight up player tree, Taysom for Greg Dulcich <laughs> for the Broncos. You know what's funny? I, I, I I'll, love. I'll, I'll, I'll be from the senior bowl. <laughs> but he's he's been, his 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 hamstrings just tore up, bro. I, I wouldn't do it, bro. I wouldn't do it. And I, I, I love Greg, bro. I love Greg. <laughs> he he got like the Marshawn Ohio State hamstrings, bro, oh, as, a, as a pro. It's just, it's bad, man. I would <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Now, but that, Demon Tom said a lot of more for Kittle in the third. I don't want that contract that comes with Kittle. Mm-hmm. And, you're, and, and you have Lattimore's dead cap space. I'm good. But that, the Dawson Knox thing stands out to me because you have a player and the Bills are probably never going to come out and say this, but I know I know for a fact that they were interested in trading Dawson Knox last season when they after they drafted Dalton Kincaid. I, I'm I'm calling Brandon Bean. And I'm saying, listen, what 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 we got to do to get Dawson Knox? Because then, because then we would just we've talked about this tight end room being kind of meh, right? Then you're taking pressure off of Jawan Johnson. Now he don't got to be tight end one. Hmm. 
He can just be tight end too, bro. Just play your role, get open, make plays. Then the offense, in theory, right? You got Dawson Knox as your tight end, Olave, Shahid, uh, Dwan Johnson, your tight end too. Hopefully a, a rejuvenated AK. Fawag at right tackle. Don't know what you got left tackle yet. I, that offense just, I stuck on paper. If just if you could just get like a conductor that can just make some good throws when needed, I don't know, maybe like a Spencer Rattler. I don't know, Ryan. I'm just saying the makings of it is there. Like yeah. you think about that offense, it, you, it gets you to tingle a little, just a little bit, bro. No, I take it. Uh, anyone makes no sense to trade anyone out anyone out of the best cornerback room. Lattimore trade talk is really ridiculous to me, but then I realized the Saints are known to give up best players anyway. I mean, yes, all that, all that 100%. But also, too, the thing that the Saints are battling is you have a star player at a, star, at a great position who's been a star for a long time for your team and one of your best defensive players who essentially has come to, has essentially communicated to the team that he does not want to play for the head coach because he feels like the head coach is, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this is verbatim, but like head coach doesn't know what he's doing. And the man's 24 and 46. So I would probably side with Lattimore that he's, he's talking like he knows what he's talking about. Right. And, and we've talked about it numerous times on this podcast. When you go from filet mignon or, or a five, and then you just, you know, no offense, but then you just, at like Ruby Tuesdays and you eating steak for Ruby Tuesday. Like it's not the same. It's, it's well not done, the same. Well done Ruby Tuesday <laughs> steak. Yeah, with, with, the, with, with A1 sauce just dumped on it. It is not the same. Like so we, steak, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I would put Alante at, at safety and Kool-Aid in the slot. I would love, I would love for them to try Alante at safety. I would love it, bruh. I, I don't know. I would just, that's what he played in Tennessee. <clears throat> um, Demon Tom says, Knox Stocks, Knox Stock has to be an all time low. Probably around, around the same level of Andrea Knox, bruh, when she was, com- when she was com- convicted of a crime. I don't know, Ryan, but it's yes. It's probably pretty low. Um, any, anyone else? I think, hold on, let me pull this up again. I think we, I do think we, we're talking about cuts and this is not, it wouldn't be a crazy cut or anything, but I do think like Lou Hatley, maybe with this, the punter that they got, bro, like mm-hmm. he might be out. Um, you don't notice. But he, he had like that, like that we saw, you know, I have a, I have a sneaky one for you. It wouldn't shock me at all if they cut um Nate Shepard. No, no, they the wouldn't want the, shock me. Yeah. But I don't like what. We'll what did he? What's the D line looking like? <laughs> G said, "If it's that low, maybe we convince them to take Jamal Jamal for Knox." I don't think it's that low, G. <laughs> I don't think. It's... Oh, oh yeah, that's a cut. That's a player we should mention. Like I wouldn't. Tr- tr- it wouldn't shock me at all if them if they cut it. Jamal Williams. Tano, maybe Tano. Tano getting up there. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Send me a cut. Um... Man, our D line is ass. Man, it's... <laughs> like, like, I know, I know Saunders and, and Shepard are right there, but like honestly, that to me is like the future of the defensive defensive tackle right there. Oh yeah, Reese and Boyd. Yeah. Reese and Boyd. I, I think I think Boyd could like come in and just have a very impactful season, man. Think so, man. Early, I mean, because that cause this is hard to learn, man. It's not to learn, but like you know, just woo. You got it. You you playing nose tackle, boy. You right there in the midst of the fire. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but yeah. the 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 talent on tape. I, I get it's a, it's a it's a jump. All that the talent on tape. I trust him as a player. I, tr- mm-hmm. I, oh, me too. I, tr- I trust him that I, I think he's going to have some type of impact um, this season. Oh, for, for completely forgot they drafted the special team or not drafted, sorry, signed like that special teamer guy from um, who was with the commanders, uh, Hudson. Oh, yeah. 
Um, no, I think I think we kind of hit them all. No one else really kind of standing out there. We hit Peyton Turner. I think Jamal could be gone. Yeah, we 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 hit him. I, I I would just love I would just love to see could we just see what we have in Nick Salaverde Salaverde because it's Cinco de, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, please, man. I just it, it would be nice. It'd be nice. Uh, are the Saints entering a soft rebuild similar to what the Bucks did last year with eating all the dead cap? Yes, they are. Like, and I think yeah. if you listen to what Mickey has said in pressers, like as much as he has said, like lied blatantly in pressers, you completely, you get the sense that yes, they, they feel like they are in a soft rebuild. They're trying to do a soft rebuilding of their cap situation. And a big, like very underrated storyline, maybe not too underrated is like the the whole Derek Carr thing, because like, if he, has a similar season that he had last season and if it's still like very inefficient and kind of like very hot and cold like they could get out of his contract at the end of this upcoming season as a post june one casualty bro they could, they could save some money bro money ryan interesting bro um be interesting man start boyd and let him take his lumps he even has some pass rush that's why that's why this whole Training camp preseason is just going to be so fascinating because it's not so much on the defensive side for preseason and training camp, but like the offensive side, like it's completely new. Everything yeah. about it is going to be new. Uh, Clint, Clint, Clinton Rattler, two thousand twenty-five. Man, that sounds like a like a like a red state, bro. Like just got got the flag on it, just a well, red yeah, shirt. Right Clinton Rattler, two thousand twenty. <laughs> Big ass Clint? American flag. I voted for Clint. I voted for Clint. That's some Louisiana <laughs> shit. <laughs> Big time, bro. Anyway, um, they <laughs> Brian said Saints running the de- don't tread on me offense. If you saw those offensive <laughs> that offensive lineman picture from the uh the the fish hey. thing, yes, that's exactly. What Get, get, can we get my MAGA right tackle or, or guard uh, Landon Young in there, bro? Like, Landon Young was looking good, bro. <laughs> Come on, Landon. <laughs> Big C's that. out there. Big C's. Exactly. Big C's um, man. Just, just a, a, a steady, okay <laughs> guard, bro. <laughs> just today, man. It's what I, just, it's what I aim to be in life right there, bro. The steady, okay guy. It's <laughs> okay, but, man. Thank y'all so much for just joining us this Sunday night. Uh, we got, I think we got up to, I don't know, 30, 35, I don't know, 30 ish uh, concurrent viewers. On a Sunday the, night. On a Sunday Cinco night. Mayo. Well, think of the Mayo. It's what? It's late. You know, it's, what, it's like 11 p.m. where you are. It's 9 p.m. where I am. So just the fact that people got on and, and just chopping up with those talking saints, it was a fun episode. Uh, we enjoyed it. It would be interesting. It, it, it just, Football, football is approaching slowly but surely. Yeah, man. It's approaching. Um, very excited to do the the schedule release episode. You know what? Before we before we go, before we go, imagine a world where the Saints didn't have Da as a head coach. It's nice to hear the fantasy talk until Da shows he can coach situational football. It doesn't really matter who's on the field. I 100 mm. percent agree with you hey. because I just the the last four games in the season. Maybe because I was there, cannot get that Rams game out of my head. Can't get it out. Mm. Of <laughs> like it was like that was a snuff film, like a snuff film. And in my head, I was just like, if they can't get past, if they get embarrassed like this by these guys, like we are not even in the same category tier of other teams. And the other Rams teams. were, and the Rams last year were like they were kind of a you know. They were rebuild the team themselves. You know what I'm saying? They were like, like a they were like a, a plunky team. A plunky team. And they, we look like we belong on the same field. Same field, bro. Like that that's the thing. <laughs> Again, we it's been mostly since the draft has been pretty hopeful, bro. But like that just, just burnt in my mind. Clint, let me baby. ask you, Clint. <laughs> I'm voting for Clint. Um <laughs> I'm gonna ask you this question. This was asked to me, and it was a very 
fun and I had to think about it. Thought exercise I had to do. I'm going to ask this to the chat too. Are the Saints a top 10 team in the NFC? I have to list them up. One. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on. Let me do it. Let me pull. Let me um, pull them up. Cause I, so, so I had to, I, I'm not going to spoil. Well, that, that was dumb. Um, I'm not going to spoil where I had them. So I have the NFC teams up, right? So you have, hold on. So a top 10 team in the NFC. You have the Cardinals, Falcons, Panthers, Bears, Cowboys, Lions, Packers, Rams, Vikings, Saints, Giants, Eagles, Niners, Seahawks, Bucks, Commanders. Let's list them out. Okay, let's start with the top. 49ers will be number one. Wait. Oh no, I just just go from the, the list. Don't go from the like the don't go for like the, the, the top tier teams. So like you see you see the Oh, yeah. I'm sharing my screen. Those yeah, are the, those are the Cardinals, Ryan. You said the 49ers. No, I'm trying to think. What? Like oh. you're saying are the other Saints a top ten team. I'm trying to list out okay. the best. Okay. Oh, I, thought, you, I, thought, we, the I thought we were just gonna go through Okay. Got you. Okay. 49ers. 49ers, Lions, Eagles, Green Bay. Um, who will go next? Cowboys. Yep. Um Rams. Rams. That's six. So then it goes, are the Saints better than the Seahawks? New staff. Just just <sighs> just talent 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 wise. Who was the Seahawks record last year? Uh, what did, they, did they make the playoffs last year? No. I'm gonna say I'm Ooh. gonna say that the Seahawks are better. I'm giving I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Think they're better? I yeah. Okay. I okay. get. So I get to see. So wait, are we are we at seven? Yeah. Okay. The Bucks Tampa won the Bay. division last year. I think you got. I think you until like they beat like. I they won the division last year. The Saints lost them in that last game though. Dang. They did. They did. Okay, okay, give it, give, okay, Tampa Bay is number eight. Who's number nine? Vikings. Are they better than Vikings? With T.J. T.J. McCarthy? They was winning games with the guy who got demoted to emergency (laughs) quarterback, Ryan. (laughs) Okay, let's give it to the Vikings then. Okay, now we're at 10. I had I had them when I did this exercise a week or week and a half ago. They came in tenth for me. I put like it right this, at I put it like this: they're in that tier the the tier of the Vikings, uh, the, the Seahawks, the Bucks. Like they're in that right sphere. So they right. they're yes they're a top ten team barely in the NFC, which is a weak <laughs> like the NFC is right extremely weak right now. So it, like we if, if we expanded this up. <laughs> Dante said no hair NASA cooked this. <laughs> uh, why don't I want to Ryan, call him Ryan Ryan Shazier? Ryan Shazier uh, snuck it. snuck snuck back into the field, man. I'm about to have the draft party, bro. <laughs> snuck back into the field, man. Went from being paralyzed to like just running all over the Saints defense, bro. And cheating on his wife at the same time. I still can't believe Jameson. I can't believe he threw that ball. And he threw that ball. And he threw that ball. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had I had them right when I did this episode or did this exercise. I had them right at ten. Like that's yeah. where they that's where they came in for me. If we spread um, this out to the whole NFL, it'd probably be in the twenties. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, okay. <laughs> So let's let's do it. Since let's wrap it up. Let's do it. They're not okay. So they're not better. Okay. So so are they better than the Cardinals? Let's give them, yes. Let's give them yeah. the benefit of the doubt. Better than the Cardinals. 
even with Kirk Cousins and all that, I'm for, I'm saying that they're better than the Falcons. Mm-hmm. They're better than the Panthers. This is the one I struggle with. Are they better than the Bears right now, though? Right now? I mean, I got to see it, but I, I, on paper. Hashtag on paper. <laughs> I, I would, if we're just talking just on paper, I would put the Bears. I would put the I'll, Bears ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, then every other team, uh, they're better than, the, I'll give them, they're better, being better than the commanders, right? So yes. out of, out of what, 32, I can't do math. 16 teams, they came in what, like at 12th? If I'm doing that math yeah. correct, because we put the Bears, okay. They're not better than the Ravens. They're not better than the Bills. Oh. They're not better than no. the Bengals. <laughs> they're no. not better than the Browns. Uh, Broncos, I would say, yeah, they're wise, they're better. they're better than them talent wise. Coach wise is different. I coach it. No, 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 no. Houston, Texans, no. no. Colts, they beat them last year. Mm-hmm. They, they beat they beat them, but with uh, but without Anthony Richardson, I'll gi- I'll give them the Colts. Okay, I'm gonna I'll I'll give, be generous. I give the Colts. Jags. This is they're probably a lot closer to like the Jags and. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I, say I, I'm gonna say no just because the Jags beat them last season. Yeah, okay. Uh, Chiefs no. Chiefs no. Raiders. Talent wise, yes. In terms of like, other than that, I, like coaching wise and stuff, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say right now I'm gonna give them better than Raiders. Okay, be generous. Yeah. Chargers. No, I, no, bro. With, with Herbert no. and Harbaugh, no. No. Dolphins, no. No. Patriots, yes. Yes. Jets. Yes. Are you, is it a, a healthy, I'm going to imagine a healthy Q9 Rodgers, I'm going to say yes. No, no, sorry. I'm going to say no. They're not better than the Jets with a healthy Q9 Rodgers. Steelers, <laughs> yes. Titans, yes. I've lost count. <laughs> Me too. That puts them like twentieth in the league with him, bro. It was worse than twentieth. That's like twenty fifth, twenty sixth. I mean, I saw the Athletic had the Saints like the third worst team in the league. I was like, yeah, third worst. They're, like just doing this thought exercise, they look to me. They feel like. 26th, 27th worst, but like at that point, like you're splitting hairs a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. About the 20, you know, 24th worst 24th, team in the league. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. They did oh, win wow. nine games last year, though. Nine games. <laughs> the easiest schedule in almost like NFL history, but yes, they, they won. They won. That sounds like, sound like a DA Mickey state. <laughs> Games. That's, that's, I mean, look, I'm sure DA said that right now. We won nine yeah. games. Yeah. Anyway, fun thought exercise. But um, thank y'all so much for the support. Uh, we appreciated this episode went a, a little longer than intended, but it was fun. Uh, just talking about trades, cuts, uh, where the Saints ranks in terms of the NFL and the NFC, and we'll see, man. Like, here's the thing. Like, that's the thing about sports. All it takes is just one thing to just maybe go right for a team in a season. And that could be, like, I just, maybe I'm just being, like, super fan, but I just can't have, like, this. there's this envision in my mind of just Spencer Rattler just coming in and just, like, looking, like, like, like it look like I'm saying in training camp and in preseason, it looks close. Like, uh. if it's close, start the rookie, bro. If it's close, mm. start the rookie. Because, like, as a team, if you were gonna, if you were going to trade up for Penix Jr., like you, you already to me are signaling what your actual thoughts are about Derek Carr. Already emotionally you cheating. You're emotionally cheating already, bro. <laughs> like, you know what they say? That's sometimes worse than the physical. Oh, oh all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's not get started with that one. Anyway. Um, cheat. Saints. Cheat. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> anyway, we will be back um, maybe this week. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, 
you know, there are kind of things kind of if y'all have topic requests, ideas, we could just do, even do like a Q and A, man. Like we'll we'll see. Even if it's like trying a short Q and A. Guess on trying, trying, we trying, yeah. we trying. Uh, you know, maybe I'll I'll hit up um our girl Catherine Fisher, uh, very talented, talented person working in the entertainment industry out here who's a who's a Saints fan. She fell in love with New Orleans after living there for a long time and she still has a place there. Like she has a place mm. in she lives here and has a place in New Orleans that she like just just doesn't want to sell because that's like mm. home to her. Like that love. is a love a love letter in and of itself to the city of New Orleans. So maybe we'll hit up Catherine Fisher and get her on um just talk Saints and entertainment industry and things like that. But we appreciate y'all for joining us and and all the lives and everything. Uh, we'll be back this week. Please, I know this is at the end of the podcast, but please like, subscribe, all that on YouTube, all that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that. We appreciate it. We love y'all. Appreciate y'all. With that, we're out. Peace.